Welcome back. Today we're comparing a Osram Nightbreaker against a bread and butter um, H4. I just fitted them to my car and they are much better than the standard ones. Um, I have another set so this at the moment we have a standard bolt in it and uh, just to see how this is just my makeshift light test stand here and if you just look at the pattern here uh, don't worry this is a, a left hand drive light here so I think it's oriented correctly uh, but the, the drop is on the other side because we are left hand drive here that's the reason why this is a spare here that's, I think it came from a bike which had which was obviously from Europe um, so I had a spare. it doesn't matter for what we're gonna do uh, we're gonna turn the light down and then we measure the light intensity at the surface on the wall which is probably about three meters away and also look at the pattern let me turn the light off and that's how our pattern looks like with a bought bread and butter H4 uh, we're gonna do a measurement as well bear with me for a second uh, by the way this is the that's how the high beam looks like a bit odd I think it's got a bit <coughs> little bit of orientation problem um, if you look at the current draw this is high beam 5 amps and low beam 4.5 4.4 I'm running at 12.5 volts which is the average what you can expect at your light sockets in the car because there's loss uh, 13.8 is standard um, if the alternator is running but at the, at the bulb or at the, at the back of the of the headlight you won't have much more than 12 and a half that's the reason why we ran 12 and a half this this power supply is rock solid so it doesn't move anywhere um, yeah let me hook it up to permanent light and we will check the, uh, the light intensity so we got the meter calibrated to zero and we're measuring at the center which gives us uh, let's see the maximum here it's about 1600 I don't know if it's visible about 16, 1650 maybe with some goodwill at the brightest point okay let's fit a well, let's let's try high beam as well. So this is high beam again. This is is very odd. With high beam, we having yeah. so three thousand three hundred, three thousand seven hundred, three thousand eight hundred. So three eight hundred at max. And again, I'm expecting the center to be somewhere here, not here. All right, um, let's swap the bulb, and then we'll give it another try. It come even with a fancy etching here. It's blue. Never touch these H4 bulbs. Uh, that's the standard one, which the low. That's that. It's marked because the low beam. That's actually a Philips. It has a little bit of a blue tint as well. But these are a really fancy etching here where it's sort of a window left out so let's swap this one in and see what we get apparently what they do is they just stretch the limits go to the positive tolerances and you can see that here on high beam it's 5.3 ish amps and low beam is 4.8 so that's a little bit more I would say 10-15% more and look at the pattern that's low beam and that's high beam so it looks a lot brighter let me turn the light off and uh, 
just do some measurements here. Sorry it's dark, but if we do light testing, it makes sense if it's dark. Where's my meter going? Here. Yeah. So this is two and a half thousand. That's low beam, and that's the center of the beam. 2,500, 2,500-ish 2, at best. That's a thousand more. And uh, that's high beam. Let's see what we get here. High beam is not much more actually. Yeah, three, two hundred. About three two hundred, three five hundred, three seven. Seems to be the maximum somewhere here. So let's say three seven hundred. All right. And the pattern looks a bit weird as well, but this is not. Is that what I'm wondering about? What I'm wondering about is is actually this one here. But I think it's probably that particular light here. It's just, it's not very clean. I don't know if it's visible. You can see it's dusty inside. But it doesn't matter, we've got the same condition for both. Uh, the cutoff looks, I think the cutoff looks better. But this is not a very sophisticated light. It's, it, it needs to be uh, a bit better actually. So, I have another one which is just another old one it's a different make i can't really see what it says let me check it so the first one was a sheer looks and we're gonna try this one as well because this was a bit dim i got a feeling it says cec on it let's see this let's try this one and figure out what that how good that is uh, because I had two of them in the car and one was very dim so it's probably that one let, let me figure it out I'm gonna swap it over and then so what we can clearly say the nightbreaker is the high beam is not much more but uh, low beam is at least 40% more probably 50 and I can tell the same when driving. Okay, let's try the other brand because there's there's a huge difference between these bulbs. It's just normal. You get what you pay for. All right, let me try the other one. Okay, okay, here we got that CEC, and we can see that the beam is very yellowish. Strange one. Uh, it draws four and a half amps and it draws 5.3 on high beam but it's still very yellowish it's not white so let's see what the light intensity is at low beam it it's exactly what i've observed on the car this looks a bit yellowish where's my meter let's see it's dim it's 1200 15 with some goodwill 1550 yeah. 1550 with some goodwill that confirms my feeling I had with the car it, it was just it looked like candles so this is high beam and we're having 4000 800 can't remember what the other one had it looks brighter but it's about 4800 so and the beam is a bit weird but again that could be that light uh, because it's one of these old style with the cap at the front uh, you don't have these anymore they look different now anyway this is gives us a good idea and it's pretty constant on 5.2 here so well let's see 
this is a broken Phillips, but the high beam still works. Let me let me hook that one up, um, and just to see what the Phillips makes a difference here. Again, there's no low beam because it's broken, but it's got that bluish tint on it. All right, let me try that. So here we got the half dead Phillips, uh, and. It does look a lot brighter. But it only looks brighter. Two, seven, two, five, three, two, three, 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 three. Yeah, make that three, two, fifty, three, three thousand three hundred. That's uh, the best thing. But if you look, I don't know if it's visible, but if you look at the pattern. It looks so much brighter, so the co the light color is much brighter. And uh, that's uh, that's the difference. Is what's, what's the current draw on high beam? It draws about five amps, so it's less than the other one. All right. <coughs> this was a short test of various H4 headlight bulbs and uh, I can confirm the light breakers are a lot better than the rest of the world and tried other ones there's other high power no, it's not high power but the power is 60 and 55 watts but uh, yeah I don't know what they're doing but uh, it's a, it's quite a bit brighter the only difference you can see here is if you look carefully you can see the life expectation here on the it says here everything is more but the life expectation is about half of a normal one because it runs it burns hotter it's brighter that's what it is i may try that with a proper headlight because i'm not happy with this one i don't know if it's visible but there is a big cover inside that's the way it was done in the old days but well that's what it is um, they look different nowadays. Anyway, hope that's of use for someone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time. Uh, the only downside of those is, apart from the life expectation, they're not cheap. I think I paid 20 pounds a pair, so that makes it 25 or 28 dollars. I'm not ent entirely sure what the exchange rate is at the moment. But uh, these cheaper ones, they probably a five or a pop max, probably less. Anyway, that's it from this one. <coughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time. <laughs>